Hello, I'm under the water. beautiful people, and yeah. welcome. Hi. To Ask the Jeff Nilo Edition. Nilo is a unit that is very hard to discuss in the sense that basically every question about her, the answers vary a lot depending on the state of your account, depending on what kind of enemies you're fighting, and all that. Because of that, I'd say that Nilo is one of the most, I guess, polarizing units. This to say, while I would say that I have a pretty decent understanding of her teams, I haven't experienced all of the facets of Nilo, uh, like a lot of Nilo mains have. And so if you would like to get more information on Nilo teams, obviously this video will answer some of your questions. But another specific content creator that you should check out is uh, Jamie, who is the writer of the Nilo guide for Nilo mains. He has a YouTube channel that you can check out. It's not exactly the same kind of content as me, but it does showcase a lot of Nilo teams, a lot of Nilo speedruns, a lot of rotations for Nilo and other teams. I've referred to his uh, speedrun video of the Nut, I think in the Meta Roundup video. But yeah, if, you, if you're looking for ample information on Nilo, you're looking for the kind of stuff that goes a little bit more in detail for like specific teams, for specific rotations, than what I'll be doing in this video, go check that out. But with that, with that out of the way, let's uh, let's get right into it and let's start with the first question. First things first, what is her overall place in the meta? What is her pull value? And how much has changed since her initial release in 3.1? Nilo is one of the units that has changed the most since their release. And she's not even that old of a unit, right? By that, I don't mean that like she went from <laughs> nearly unplayable to actually pretty good like a unit like Kuki or a unit like Toma did with Dendro, but she definitely gained a lot of potential power with the release of Nahida. Thing is, not everyone has Nahida, and because of that, right, that's part of the many reasons why Nilo is such a polarizing unit. People that have Nahida and people that don't have Nahida will have a very different experience when playing Nilo. Nahida aside though, there is another thing that has happened since her release that actually, I don't wanna say made her significantly stronger, but it definitely made her a lot easier to make work. So the release of Yao Yao gave us a non-hydro healer option, which had significantly expanded Nilo team's options for team building. The Yao teams aren't necessarily better than Kokomi teams, right? I wanna get that out of the way. Uh, they can be in some situations, it heavily depends, just like many Nilo teams, but they are more accessible because Yao is a four star while Kokomi is a five star, which means that the amount of other five stars that you're relying on to have your Nilo team actually be good is less, right? Now, obviously, Nilo teams, as we'll get into later, when they're in their niche, even if it's not a, gr a good Nilo team, even if it's a very underwhelming version of a Nilo team, it can potentially be still pretty good because it's supposed to be good in a specific niche, and in that niche, even the worst versions of it are still pretty good. But like, it, it, it's gonna be a lot worse than the, than the than than if you did have the other options, basically. Now, one of the biggest obstacles to pulling for Nilo in her initial run was that Nahida wasn't out yet, which meant that not only were we not like, like, or could we not be entirely sure of how well she was synergized with Nahida, but also, unless you had enough primos to guarantee getting to pity four times, right? In case you lose, lost 50-50 twice, going for Nilo could mean that you wouldn't have the primo gems to go for Nahida later on. Now, because Nahida is already out and some people already have her, then it is possible that you already have Nahida. Anyways, getting back to the initial question, what's her overall place in the meta? Nilo is very good. Nilo is a unit that excels in AoE situations because the way that the way that Bloom works is, well, for each enemy on which you trigger Bloom, you create a C. But if you're against two enemies, that means that you're creating two cores with one application. But those two cores, both of them will hit each enemy, which means that when you're against two enemies, you're effectively getting double the damage from your cores because you're generating twice as many cores. Now, if you start being against three or four or five enemies, you can potentially get even more cores and thus even more damage. However, if you generate them at the exact same time, which very often can happen, it does depend on your rotations and, and how you play your teams, but if you generate them at the exact same time, Blooms have a limit. They can basically only do their damage up to twice every 0.5 second from the same target. Which means that if you have three enemies that are all affected with Dendro, and then you activate Kokomi's E and generate three Bloom Seeds, 
with Nilo's thing active, they explode, only two of them will deal damage. But if all three are affected with Dendro, but your Kogami E only hits two of them, and then you normal attack the other one of them, and there's more than 0.5 seconds in between those two, then you can get three instances of damage. There's a lot of nuance that goes into how you can get more instances of damage, and a lot of it is really, really dependent on the enemy's positioning and size, which means that Nilo's power will vary a lot depending on what enemies you're fighting, right? Now, if you have all of the tools to make her better teams, Nilo teams can have enough single target damage to meet most of the single target DPS checks because most of the single target D DPS checks are not that high. Uh, in Genshin. I'd say that this Abyss with the Wina is probably the closest that Nilo's been to not being able to meet the single target DPS checks to the point where uh, if you're using her good teams you'll be fine but if you're using the weaker teams unless you play like actually perfectly you're likely just not going to be able to clear the Wina in time even if your first half is really fast. And a lot of the time you'll be able to just put Nilo on the side that isn't the one that has the highest uh, single target DPS requirement. So Nilo's like weakness in single target very often isn't that big of a deal. It's still important to mention because well, if you're planning on pulling for Nilo, you probably want to know that before rather than after. But if you have Nahida, most of the time you'll be able to get away just barely killing the enemies in time, even in the in the in the chambers that are not meant for her. Now, when I talk about teams being strong or weak in, in, in types of content, right, I don't mean that they're unplayable. I just mean literally the words I'm saying, strong or weak, compared to the alternatives. Nilo's not the only team that is strong or weak in a type of content, right? You can look at, for example, Hu Tao. Hu Tao Vape teams, which are teams that are generally weak in AoE. You can look at Virgin teams, which have the exact same weaknesses as the Nilo teams, where they're generally weak in single target. Going back to her actual strength, overall, she's a very strong unit that works with specific units that you would quite like to have. She's a lot weaker if you don't have Nahida. But if you do have Nahida, her teams are one of the best, or some of the best AoE teams. And they have one of the really nice advantages of not really relying on either Singto or Bennett, who are units that are very, very often in demand on your other side, right? If you're someone who likes playing hyper carries, it's very, very likely that you're gonna want Bennett on the other side. If you're playing basically <laughs> any other non hyper carry team, it's very likely that Singto is gonna be in demand on the other side. Nilo not needing either will often let you have more flexibility in your second side team. Her pull value, I would say that, again, right, because her power does vary a lot whether you have Nahida or not. And by the way, the main reason why her, her power varies so much if you have Nahida or not is because Nahida's Dendro application has no downtime, is at a decent speed, and is 1.5 units instead of 1 units, which lets you get one more bloom per dendro application, right? Like, she is actually, like, significantly better than the other options in the Nilo teams because of those things. But yeah, I'd say if you have Nahida, her pull value is among the... probably among the highest of the 5 stars, uh, assuming that you're not using already using Nahida for another one of your teams. She's overall just, like, really strong, and she, she does what she does really well. That being said, there are a lot of teams that are good in AoE, right? There are a lot of teams that don't rely on 5 stars that are good in AoE. So as much as she can be quite good, I don't want anyone to, like, come away from this video thinking that they have to go for Nilo because she's just so much better than everyone else in AoE. But, but that being said, she is definitely one of the higher pull value 5 stars if you already have Nahida. And I'd say that if you don't have Nahida, she's probably one of the lowest pull value 5 stars. I would argue that without Nahida, most of her teams are generally side grades to the other good AoE teams in AoE content. Sometimes upgrades, but not often enough for me to, to, to feel comfortable saying that she has good pull value. Compared to the other 3.6 5 stars, who else is there in 3.6? It's Nahida, Baiju, and Ganyu, right? I've talked so many times about Ganyu, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but Ganyu is not the highest pull value, definitely. Baiju, uh, I've released the pre-release, the Baiju pre-release already. I'd say that like he's overall pretty good at what he does, but often a side grade to Yao Yao. And I would say that he's not an upgrade in enough teams for him to be particularly high pull value. Maybe except if you're a Sino main, but even then, 
I'm not sure. And then versus Nahida, she has lower pull value than Nahida, and I think that's just always gonna be the case. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, as usual though, when we talk about pull value, keep in mind, even if you're someone who cares about meta, it doesn't mean that pull value is the only thing you should take into account when deciding whether or not to pull for a unit. It's a potentially useful metric, but even if a, if a unit has high pull value, but they don't fit with your teams or work with the units that you like, or you just don't like them, then don't fucking go for them. That would be dumb. Don't be dumb. <laughs> Can you briefly explain and clarify your stance on Nilo's kit design since people tend to confuse your design for how limiting it is with your perception of her strength? Sure. I think that Nilo's kit design is really bad. And I want to make it very clear, I don't think that the playstyle design is bad. I think that the, the playstyle design of like changing the way that your blooms work and all that, like I think that's really cool and I think that's amazing. And it's very welcome and I would love to see more things like it. So the, the condition of all characters in the party being all Dendro and Hydro, it feels like it's an artificial limitation that's designed to get you to spend money. I've thought a lot about the kind of possibilities that there could be if this limitation wasn't there. And quickly going through them, you'd have possibility for Nilo Fridge, possibility for Nilo with a grouper, or Nilo with an electrocharge unit, which would not trigger Hyperbloom. If you kept the passive but removed the limitation, you still wouldn't be able to Hyperbloom them. But you, you would be able to use the electro unit to help with your application because of the interactions between electrocharged and dendro and quicken and hydro. You could do some pyro stuff, but meh, not really. So that's interesting. And you'd be able to use just geo units if you felt like it, like don't leave if you want the shield, stuff like that. The main potentially strong things that this is preventing is fridge stuff and the like using a grouper. But it would be very easy to instead of having her kit her passive be like this, to have it be like Goro, where instead of it just being an on and off switch. It's a baseline passive that gets stronger depending on the amount of units of a given element you have in your party. So you could have where if you have one unit that's not Dendro or Hydro, you lose the 100 EM, or you lose that the cores explode instantly, or you lose any of the properties of these. And it, like you could very easily balance her around that. The only real downside to that is that it lets players play more different teams, which is an upside for players, but a downside for a company whose main goal is to sell new units. And so the restriction on Nilo's passive is kind of just an artificial way to make more money. And the reason why it feels so artificial is because it's like, it's it's weird. If you put Jolie in your party, your passive just stops working. Her whole kit just becomes a fucking, like literally empty if you have Jolie on your team. And it feels to me like an incredibly lazy way to like sell new units and it limits a lot of the possibilities that I feel could have been so fun especially when I'm reminded of like all the cool dank teams that you'd be able to make all the fun interactions it just makes me really sad that we'll never be able to do that because Ahoyo just didn't want us to have fun that part of her design aside like I really like her playstyle. I think it's a cool idea but yeah are her talents worth leveling and is her burst worth using at all before C6? Eh. You're not building crit, you're not building damage percent, you're just building HP. Which means that the damage that you do is not that high, and the scalings aren't that insanely high either. The early levels are like, so fucking cheap, that there's no real reason not to get them other than it looks funny at like, if everything's level 1. That even if they don't really increase your damage much, they're still like, efficient. Getting to level 2 costs 3 like, green books, which is like, 4 resin, 5 resin. <laughs> like, it, it really is nothing. But are her talents worth like, considerably leveling? Not really. Unless you're actually like, on fielding her, I guess. Or like, playing her in uh, in vape teams. Uh, and is her burst worth using at all? Generally, you don't really care that much about using the burst, like for the damage it does, but it is hydro application and a pretty large AoE, so you can use it to trigger more blooms potentially. And it's also iframes. Is there ever a situation to use her other E state instead of just stopping it three times to activate her A1 and swapping out? Okay, first off, ideally you don't want to tap it three times. If you retap her skill, it will do like the off field variation of it. 
The animations are pretty long, and if you uh, use your mouse one, right, if you do your normal attack button, it will do the on-field version of it. So what you'd expect is that if you want to get the off-field, you just tap four times, I guess. So you tap E and then you E three times, and then you have your your, your ring for, for the off-field thing, right? But if you do E, and then normal attack, and then normal attack, and then E, you still get the off-field one because it's decided by the last one you do, but the animations for the normal attack ones are faster. Right? So if you do it like this, you get the same result, but it's faster. It's also a little bit more damage, but it's not like that matters. But is there ever a situation to use her other E state? Eh, if you're finishing off an enemy, I guess. If you're playing her in vape, I guess. But generally, it's not really something that you'd want to be doing. Artifacts that Ori, so she, she doesn't have a like great 4 piece set for her. So you can make an argument for just a like a 4 piece flaw. But with the upcoming release in 3.6 of a, of a new 2 piece HP% percent artifact set, I would probably recommend going for 2 piece tenacity, 2 piece of that new set, just to get 40% HP, assuming you don't have key. If you have key and really good artifact quality, it's very possible that you can cap out your passive without actually using that in which case it might be better to go for a four piece flaw. But yeah, generally don't go gilded, right? If we if we quickly napkin math the difference between gilded and flaw, without artifact sets, you can safely expect to reach about 55K with like a solid artifact without the key. And with the key, you'd add 86.2, right? So you're getting closer to 68K. But with this, right, if you were to add 40%, you basically cap out. But also that means that if you have like another, cause this is 15%, this is six rolls of HP percent on flower and feather. And because you can actually go off piece on one of the two, because you don't care that much about your sub stats on your HP main stats on, on the rest, you can somewhat reliably get 40 and with really good artifacts, get 50 to 60, but let's say 50. This is what you can get basically without set bonuses, and it caps out at 74.4k, right? With one two-piece HP, you're basically capped out, and two two-piece HP, you're overcapped. But generally, right, uh, if you don't have her weapon, probably better to go for the two-piece two-piece with HP, and you should be able to reach 60-something k. That's a good amount to go for. Uh, at really high investment, you should be able to reach 65-ish with the new 2B set. And with her signature weapon, you can potentially expect to reach up to 70-ish K without 2B's 2B's and pretty easily overcap with 2B's 2B's, which is one of the reasons why you should potentially consider flop if you are if you have her signature. Uh, because especially if you have like really good artifact quality on your flop set, right? If you if you got some a lot of flat HP on your HP percent flop pieces, it's very possible that you actually manage to reach the cap without actually needing the 2B's 2B's, at which point going 2B's 2B's would be a pretty huge waste and you'd rather just go for flop. Anyways, also wanted to look at Gilded versus uh, flop. And then with flop, you would lose this 100 EM, right? And it would just be like quite a bit better. 4% more damage with your blooms for free. Besides the usual fare of getting her to level 90 is stacking HP, what's the best way to increase an ELO team's output? And what do you recommend to prioritize while doing so? Basically stacking EM on the units that trigger the reactions and not getting EM on the ones that don't. If you're playing well, your Dendro units shouldn't be triggering too many reactions. Obviously it depends on the specific lineup that you're using, but especially when you're using like, for example, Nahida, Kole, Kokomi, Nilo. Kole shouldn't be getting any reactions, which means that it would generally be better to be building her with attack, damage, and crit rather than EM. Kokomi will be getting a lot of reactions, which means that if you think you can get away with the lower healing, Building her with a bunch of EM will increase your team's damage ceiling. But obviously, people, me included, do not play perfectly. And so just building EM on all of your units isn't the end of the world. And obviously, like, Nahida helps the team, Key helps the team, and stuff like that. Weapon overview, how big of an improvement is Key over her other options? And does she really have no free-to-play option? Is Dole play Nilo base? And what are her best wep weapons? outside of Nilo Bloom. Let's take a look at how much damage you get from Key. Let's say you're giving Nilo Iron Sting for personal damage, for now, for now. Yeah. So if you go for a non-Key personal damage weapon on Nilo, Nilo's Blooms will deal 34, almost 35% more damage. Now the rest of your team, let's say you're using it with Kogomi, for example. So if you're building Kogomi fully M, you get 187 times three, you get Sack Frag, you get Dendro Resonance, right? You don't get the full 100 because you don't get the like follow-up 
plus 20 from triggering Burgeon or Hyperbloom. You get, I mean, you get substats, let's say 140 in substats. You get flop, which I'll be including later, but you do get 80 from flop. That's your baseline. And then with key, plus 0.2% of Nilo's max HP. Yeah, you get another 100 from Nilo passive. And if you're on fielding her, you get another 250 from Naida. Oh, uh, now your EM multiplier. Your non-Nilo characters are doing 15-ish percent more damage with their blooms. This translates to somewhere between 15 and 25% DPS increase on your teams. It's it's pretty good. One thing, uh, one other thing to keep in mind, right? If you don't actually build Kokomi full EM, if you give her a healer build and you lose those EM main stats, instead of 15, it's closer to like 20, right? So basically, key is a pretty sizable increase for your Nilo teams. That being said, again, this is more a question or this is more a matter of making those Nilo teams able to deal with single target stuff more easily because you just don't really need that when you're dealing with AoE stuff because Nilo's just really good at dealing with AoE stuff. If you're not using key, if you're not going for key, uh, your better options will generally just be an EM weapon for personal damage or fav if you have teammates that actually really uh, rely on their burst that need to get their energy back. Uh, you can also get, obviously, yes, yes, that's true. You can get Xyphos if you have it. Uh, Xyphos is quite good. It's just Iron Sting and Fav put together. It's pretty good on her. Dual Blade Nilo is based, yes, because while Iron Sting is better, your whole, your team DPS isn't that much worse with Dual Blade, and it's really funny to be using a Dual Blade. So yes, it is based. No matter her best weapons outside of Nilo Bloom, honestly, again, Jade Cutter is gonna be good because it gives HP and crit. Generally, weapons that give a lot, like high base attack will kind of be meh because she can't benefit from it because she doesn't scale with attack. Miss Splitter has enough bonuses that it's still good, but meh. Yeah, Festering can be a, a decent option as well. Harbinger if you manage to save up 90%, I guess. How good is Key as a pull? Key is a pretty solid vertical pull. I personally, like, I don't like vertical investment on accounts. I think that it's kind of meh. I think that it's boring, more importantly, right? It doesn't give you new play styles, so I don't like it. But if you are someone who cares about vertical investment, who just you know, wants to vertically invest into their account, which uh, as, as a quick reminder, vertical investment is when you take one team and you invest into it to make that one team stronger. Horizontal investment is when you get your team strong enough to clear abyss, and then instead of investing into that team again, you start building a new team so you can think different teams. Personally, I like varying my play styles, so I prefer a horizontal investment. But if you, if you are a fan of vertical investment, Key is a pretty good pull. Constellation overview, how is her constellation quality across the board? How impactful is her C2 relative to something like Nahida C2 for her teams? And how does her C6 change her playstyle and stat priority? So, C1 is okay. The first part of it doesn't do anything until you get the higher cons because you don't actually care about your, your like on-field part of your E. The second part of it does increase your uptime on on like the, the aura around her. It's probably a little bit underrated, right? Like it's not completely useless because she does do a reasonable amount of personal damage with her bloom generation and getting more uptime on her bloom generation will increase her personal damage that way. It's not great either, because it's still not a particularly big increase, but it's not a useless constellation for sure. C2 is pretty good, right? It's basically just red shred, 35% red shred. Uh, now you already have Deepwood on your team, so the red shred is a little bit less valuable. Most enemies start with 10% resistance. Getting them to minus 20 from Deepwood means that your damage difference, right, you're getting doing 20% more damage from Deepwood. If you don't have Deepwood on your team, reducing by 35% is a 25% damage increase. If you already have Deepwood on your team though, and the enemies start with minus 20, it's only a 16% damage increase. All in all, it's decent, it's okay. Kind of just meh. Uh, if you're choosing between this and Nahida C2, they do about as much. Nahida C2 is a little bit better, but it's not a like massive difference. But more importantly, Nahida C2 is also useful in non-Nilo teams, whereas Nilo C2 is only useful in Nilo teams because otherwise you're not playing Nilo. <laughs> but yeah, if you're choosing between the two, I'd probably go for, for Nahida C2. C3 is kind of whatever, C4, kind of whatever, C5 is kind of whatever, and then C6 retroactively makes C1, C3, C4, and C5 a decent amount better because 
Basically, Cisse's gives her a fuck ton of crit value, which makes her a little bit, like, quite a bit better in, like, vape stuff. And when she actually is played in vape stuff, then the, like, first part of C1, C3, C4, and C5 all start becoming a little bit more useful. That being said, though, like, honestly, even, like, I, I, I would never go for this, and even if you have this, I'd probably just play her in Bloom Teams anyways. I don't think it does enough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a TikTok showcase column, basically. That's it. <laughs> C2 or Key, Nahida C2 or Key. Well, if you can get one of the, like either her C2, Nahida C2 or Key, Nahida C2 will do more for your team, but that's two five star pulls, whereas Key is only one. And if you're choosing between Key and Nahida C1 or Nilo C1, then it's probably better to go for Key. Now, obviously the way that weapon banners compared to character banners is a fucking yeah. pain in the ass. Personally, which is part of the reason why I just don't like going for weapon banners, but meh. Uh, team overview, who are her best, or her general best teammates in Nilo Bloom? Do you prefer Yaya, Yao, Barbara, Prototype Ember, Nahida, or Kokomi as the healer there? Prototype Ember, Nahida is not enough. All right, let's get that out of the way right now. Don't play Prototype Ember, Nahida as your only healer. Please just don't. Her general best teammate in Nilo Bloom is Nahida. Basically, always want to, if you have Nahida, you want to use her with Nahida, always. Outside of that, right, you've basically got two main options. Right, you either go for triple Hydro or two Hydro, two Dendro. If you go triple hydro, you're on fielding your Nahida. You want to have either Kokomi or Barba, but ideally Kokomi. And then another hydro that can be whoever. This is generally the team that has like a higher ceiling, but harder to play. And you need to keep on fielding Nahida and get your rotations right. Because if you don't on field Nahida, your bloom stop exploding. Also, and because you have to stay on Nahida for most of the time, most of your damage is concentrated on one unit, which means that you need to manage your healing a lot better. The other option is to go to Dendro to Hydro. It's easier, it's generally more popular. If you do that, you can either go Yao Yao or a Hydro healer. If you go Yao Yao, you can basically go any Hydro as the last slot and might be surprising for some of you, but Kandaka is actually good slot with Yao Yao, especially if, if she has her C6. If she doesn't have her C6, she's reasonably decent. If she has her C6, she's one of the better, arguably the best, as the last Hydro option. It's not like actually the best, it's just like about as good as the other good, the other good Nilo teams. If you end up going for that, you're gonna wanna build your Yao Yao full EM, obviously, because she, your Yao Yao is gonna start triggering some reactions. Without Hycon, especially at C0, when you don't have the one that increases her burst duration. Without C1, it lasts such a short amount of time that it's like kind of a joke. But once you have C1, it's pretty reasonable, and once you have C6, it's actually quite good. Wait, otherwise you can just play someone like Sinto, and that's more than good enough. And then your last option is to use a unit like Kogomi instead. If you do use Kogomi, you can kind of go for whichever Dendro unit has the last slot. One that is pretty popular is Kole, because especially when you go Sack, Bow, Kole, you have really good ways of front-loading a lot of application, especially against enemies like the Wii Nut. Being able to front-load your application and trigger a lot of reactions in a short period of time helps you deal with the like inconsistent DPS windows that you have. Other than that, though, you can kind of just go for any of the Dendro units. Dendro main character will be easier to play than Kole, but uh, yeah. And does she have any good or just for fun teams outside of Bountiful Bloom? I mean, you can play her in anything where you play Ayato, I guess, but it's just... Although uh, she doesn't she doesn't trigger Beto, but she does trigger Sinso. Is it possible to approximate how many Blooms each member procs in a Nilo Bloom team, or is this too dank? I mean, it is, but the thing is, the answer is going to be different based on how many enemies you're fighting, based on which enemies you're fighting, based on what your rotation you're doing. So, I wouldn't be able to answer that question, like, as a general question right now. One thing that I do want to talk about for, like, Bloom procs, though, is the way that Nilo's E works, right? So it pulses every 0.5 seconds, right? It has internal cooldown, which means that, well, you won't apply Hydro every 0.5 seconds. But if you're against multiple enemies and you stagger your application on them by just walking into them, because usually when you walk into a group of enemies, you don't instantly teleport to the middle, you start be, by being in range of one enemy and then in range of another enemy and then another. And when that application is staggered, then your blooms are being generated at like 0.5 seconds apart. And if that's the case, and if you're against four enemies and you're generating two blooms and then another set of two blooms, then you can kind of artificially bypass the two seed limit because your seeds are being generated from the quote unquote same hydro application at a different time because you walked into them at a different moment. And that's a very significant reason for why Nilo teams are so fucking dank to calc.
All of these blues are all just being generated by Nilo, and as you might have been able to tell, we're getting more than two every two seconds, which is what you should be getting from like the, 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 the normal like ICD stuff, right? And that's because of this interaction, because, well, generally, you don't walk into all of the enemies at the same time, so that staggers the application. I would drink all the present Dendro units, including Baiju and Kaveh, and a Nilo Blue Bloom team, excluding Nahida. Like, Kole is generally one of the best Dendros, if you don't need a healer. If you need a healer, it's Yaya. And DMC is generally slightly worse than Kole, but a lot easier to play. So for a lot of people, it will perform better. Main three are DMC, Yao Yao, and, uh, and Kole, depending on what you need in your team. And other than that, you can use the other Dendros, like you'll be able to use Baiju, I guess, you'll be able, like, you'll be able to use, uh, to use Kave, you'll be able to use a Hytham, but generally I wouldn't use them over, over the three that I already mentioned. Could Kave be considered a budget version of Nilo? I mean, Kave is a budget version of Nilo in the same way that Amber is a budget version of Yoimiya. Could you make the argument? Sure. How budget though? <laughs> Very. <laughs> what is Toaster Bath? Basically, when you play Nahida as a solo Dendro with triple Hydro in Nilo teams, like I mentioned earlier, because you kind of need to keep on fielding Nahida to keep getting Bloom reactions, and also because Nahida's like base HP is not that high, it's very, very easy to accidentally kill yourself if you don't pay attention. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the team has been dubbed Toaster Bath. <laughs> How many brain cells does she have? Um... Six, I think? <laughs> That's gonna be it for the day. So thank you for dropping by. I hope you had a nice time. <laughs>